But anyway, years later, met Faraz Zahabi. Actually, John Danaher, um, I met John Danaher and he put me in touch with Faraz Zahabi. I started training at TriStar. I, you know, immediately loved uh, working with Faraz and learning under Faraz. Started training at TriStar and I did my first real professional MMA fight um, as someone that actually does head practiced a little bit prior uh, in, I think, August 2012. Mm. Um, and uh, that was uh, against a guy, he was four and five at the time. So, you know, had some experience, um, good kind of like first go for me, honestly. And I won that fight by TKO. And then it was a little bit of uh, time off. And then I did another fight against a tough guy named uh, Majid Hamo. Um, he was five and two at the time. I think he was three and I was an amateur. So he had a good, good little bit of fighting experience. Um, won that one in the first round uh, via rear naked choke. And then uh, nice. started to experience difficulty getting getting fights at, at that point. Um, you know, Were well, you continuously I, introduced as like the, the the master of grappling, the submission? At least that was, that was my thing. If, I don't know if I is, was- Is that was the source of the fear for people? Think? I, I think so, because the, I mean, I definitely wasn't much at striking at that point. You know, I, I definitely am a lot, I like to think I'm pretty hard to hurt, although I try not to lean on that. And I played baseball for like, 16 years so i can hit things pretty hard i just mm -hmm. wasn't able to uh i i recognized pretty early on that i had no idea how to actually hit things hard without becoming hittable myself so i, I think that's kind of the big thing is uh, a lot of times like we almost you were mentioning uh before if you try to go and get people too early you can hit them if they're not that good but you're going to get hit yourself so you're making you're basically making a wager you're making a trade of your own life for the ability to hit them when you watch guys like Israel Adesanya Floyd Mayweather Stephen Thompson uh Conor McGregor when he's fighting really well it's not a trade they're not you're hitting them and they're hitting you it's they're hitting you but it takes years and years and years and years to be able to learn how to do that Tan Lee is another great example of that and, you know my closest training partner one of my best friends and uh, currently now uh, one champion, uh, one championship in uh, in Asia, the champion of the uh, featherweight, or I guess lightweight featherweight, um, 155 uh, over there now. And he recently defeated uh, Martin Wynn in a really great fight. And uh, Tan knocked him out, longtime champion. And Tan doesn't let you hit him. He doesn't let you touch him. I feel so fortunate to have met guys like Steven and Tan to go early on in career and go, holy moly, I can't even, it's not even like, oh, you'll let me walk over and find you. Mm -hmm. It's like fighting a ghost that periodically shows up with a hammer and smokes you in the melon and then disappears into the ether again. So the way they approach the fighting game is thinking, how can I attack without being hit? So every yeah. every strategy, every idea you have about what you're going to do has to do with uh, like that uh, minimizing the the, the, the returns. Yeah, Ab return. Absolutely. I mean, that's what all good fighting is done. All poor fighting, if you know, throughout the course of history, most generals, whether they saw a read or, you know, they they did battles by attrition. Yeah. You know, it's like, yeah, man, I've got 150 guys, you've got 50. Like, yeah, if 60 of my guys die killing your 50, like, that's great for me. Yeah. But uh, that's not so great for the 60 guys that died. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I hope it's worth it. So when you realize that not only you're not just Kobe Bryant and you're Phil Jackson too, you got to do everything. You know, if, if you've got to run across the beach in Normandy, so be it. But that better be, you should have, we make sure we thought this through and there's like, hey, there's no way we can like, you know, walk around the side, huh? Because oftentimes there there is, and I, I think a lot of times there's a lot of incentives in professional fighting to for people to want to do that. And we come up with all sorts of, well, I'm trying to be exciting. Are you? Is that really what you came here to do? Because I came here to win. And I think that anyone that that's really successful came there to win. And if it ends up being exciting, well, that's fantastic. I hope that people enjoy watching something and that's great, but that's a qualitative assessment anyway. You know, you want to also be able to, you know, live the rest of your life. I think it's easy. You know, I'll use Meldrick Taylor. I'm a big boxing fan. Meldrick Taylor is an excellent fighter. Um, came this close uh, to a world title and was stopped with like, he was in a fight that he was winning with seconds remaining literally seconds remaining mm -hmm. and they probably could have just let it go and he would have been world champion and it was brutal if you ever watch legendary nights like uh hbo boxing show it's it's great but um it's heartbreaking it's absolutely heartbreaking and also like the beating that he absorbed in that fight changed him for the rest of his life and also you know don't think he'd never been hit before but it was one of those where you go it's it's all fun and games until you can't remember your name at age 44 years old and I didn't come here. What did what did Patton say? Nobody nobody wins a war by dying for his country. You make the other poor bastard die for his. And yeah. uh, I think that that's kind of what we're shooting for. And you know the lionization of absorbing damage and that not being a big deal. Like you hear that all the time. So and so can take shots that would put a lesser fighter down. What does that even mean? Yeah. You know, like so let me get this straight. Your ability to absorb damage is a part of you. I mean, I guess that, don't get me wrong, that is an attribute that's nice to have if you if you need it. But yeah. there's plenty of people that actually have really porous defense that 
are just very, very difficult to hurt for whatever reason. That's a fascinating fighter's perspective on the thing. I mean, the 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 story that is inspiring, and I know it goes against the artistry of fighting, is when you have taken the damage to still rise up and be able to defeat the opponent. It's so it's a... Uh, but that th that's the flip side of a basically you failing to defend yourself properly, right? I agree. But let's say for I think it's, it's a triumph. That's a triumph of your, of humanity. That's yeah. a triumph. That's amazing. It's, to witness such a thing is unbelievable. Yeah. But you still go. This is you, there is a cost here. It's like I, yeah. I have yeah. been fortunate enough to spend some time working with with the military, and I've been like around and read Medal of Honor citations. They're unbelievable. Like you read the story, and you're like, it, it's it'll floor you. But it's but, still a cost, and you don't want hey, to be paying that cost hey, or a long time. And all, most of the time, it, the cost was everything. And then sometimes you go, hey, yeah, the, the value here, it's worth everything. It's like, I defend your family, defend your country under certain circumstances, and at that point, it's extension of your family. You're like, hey, this is worth it. To casually throw your life away or throw your health away, it's foolish. There's nothing There's nothing great about that. And and like you said, it's still an amazing thing to see. Yeah. But, but it's also amazing to see you not take damage as the Floyd Mayweather. It's the artistry of like not being hit. And I wonder if maybe that's why people don't resonate with Floyd as much. Is obviously Muhammad Ali was such a time and place, a great man for so many different reasons. Although it was funny to remember, like <laughs> there were times when he wasn't very popular. We love him now because of time of context and you know time to move away from some of the nonsense he had to deal with. But uh, we got to see him struggle, and also he had unbelievable sacrifice both in and out of the ring. You know that that we all got to witness. We've never really seen Floyd struggle like that. And granted, obviously, Floyd isn't like a civil rights figure like uh, Muhammad Ali was. It's a different time, different place, and he's a different man. But basically, uh, you know, I wonder if part of the thing that made us, it made everyone think of Muhammad Ali as the greatest, in addition to, of course, the unbelievable things that he did out in the world um, and the stands that he made, we saw him struggle in the ring. It's it's almost, it's humanizing. You know, it's it's yeah. weird when you people, the person, yeah. people but, respect Khabib, but again, it's we saw GSP lose. And GSP came back stronger. Khabib is amazing, yeah. but I wonder. I wonder how people will feel about him long term. Not like they won't think of him as amazing and great, and he's been a respectable person and champion. But uh, the time we, he hasn't we, he hasn't had to fall. Yeah. If that makes sense. And also coupled with uh, Ali had a, a a way of being poetic about sort of the way he was in the ring, sort of being able to explain the artistry that he. I mean, there's like joking and being playful, but Really, he was able to describe the the flow like a butterfly's thing, like a bee. Like he was able to actually talk about his strategy without talking, without crossing that line into the Floyd Mayweather when you're just talking about money and and just talking shit. That's true. Actually, Conor McGregor, when he's not talking shit, is pretty good at like talking about the art of the martial, uh, like the, the guy. And uh, I wish Khabib did the same. <clears throat> actually, uh, from uh, like the Satya brothers, there's a few, there's a culture of like being poetic about like being scholars and also uh, bards or whatever, poets of the game. And Khabib is more like just simple and he lets his actions speak, which is, is great too. It's poetic but, in its own way. Yeah, it's great, but it's nice when you can tell stories. And uh, you know, that, that that's probably why Ali was the great.